And I'd ask my children when they were dating. He was a light. How's your light shining in the midst of world, a world that seems to be filled with the wave after wave of bad news and sorry commentary? The Apostle John wrote the words that we saw this morning. He wrote them in Greek. I will not recite them in Greek. I'm not that good. In the beginning was the Word, the Logos, the Divine. We know that, by the way. Did you know that we know that line is true? Because if you look in the first chapter of Genesis, God spoke. God spoke the Word, and it was. We know that to be true. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He, wa he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. It's important to hear the word overcome there. The darkness will not overcome it. It won't snuff it out. It won't put it out. It can't put it out. I hope those are joyful words to you. I hope those are important words to you as well. I want to repeat the last couple of verses, just, and I'm going to change it, just tweak it a little bit. Through Jesus, all things were made. Without Jesus, nothing was made that has been made. In Jesus was life, and that life was the light of all humankind, all of us. Jesus is the light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. How many here today are willing to profess totally and completely that you believe those words beyond any other words of belief? How many of us here are willing to commit to live to these words? Because brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, if you commit to them, they're going to transform your world and transform your life, and transform the way you think about others, and transform the way that you see strangers in your midst, and transform the way that you encounter those around you who are different. And they're going to make it really difficult to be around people who want to place labels on people, who want to say that this group of people is not acceptable who want to say that this race of people are somehow lesser. No. The light will transform you. It will change you. It will make you into something that most people won't even recognize. I, I have a picture that I want to have shown here. This is this young man, there it is. This young man's name is Joseph. Joseph was 23 years old in this picture when I met him back in, uh, back in 1996. I was in southern Sudan. I was working at that time for the denomination and trying to connect, make mission connections in Sudan for us so that we could begin to do work there, some intentional work there. Joseph was this incredibly bright, articulate young man. He was energetic. He was positive. He was a delight to be around. And I, I want you to notice in the picture his smile. That smile never went away. Never. He always seemed to have a joy bubbling up that made it just, wow, it was infectious. It was hard not to just feel it and not just see it. We had an opportunity to sit down one afternoon and just have a conversation. And you know, you know how conversations go. You start with, you know, how are you doing? Where are you from? You know, you got any brothers and sisters? Blah, blah, blah. You know that kind of conversation we have. We have those all the time. Don't think about them much. And I asked, you know, Joseph to tell me a bit of his story. 
and he did. Um, Joseph was born in, on the western side of southern Sudan. And when he was two years old, the Civil War started. He was far away at that point, so it didn't impact his life much. But by the age of five, the war had come to his village. And what was happening was, it didn't matter which side of the equation of that Civil War you were on, the army would come in. They would take all the young girls away to use them for things we really don't want to think about. And all the young men they would take away, even boys, and they would train them to be soldiers. And then they would simply destroy the rest of the village. If you were older, if it didn't matter, you were, you were gone. And they would destroy not just the village, but they would destroy the cattle and the fields and everything. They'd burn it all to the ground. It didn't matter. There were no good guys and bad guys there. And Joseph's parents knew that. And so they, when he was five years old, I want you to think about this as parents. At five years old, they handed him off to a seven-year-old young man, gave Joseph a tin of peanut butter, and sent him on his way to save his life. He's one of the lost boys of Sudan. It took six months to walk from the western side of Sudan across, I guess for you guys to be the western side of Sudan, to, to all the way across to Ethiopia, where he went into a refugee camp there, lived for that six months, by the way, on the goodness of people who would give them food, went to Ethiopia, took advantage of whatever education he could find there, and when that seemed to cap out, he decided that he would move across into Uganda. These are not short trips, folks. He would make his way to Uganda in a war-torn country in order to get more education. He wanted to learn. He yearned to learn. He knew that education would be the way that he would survive. And he stayed there until he was in his late teens, early 20s. He left Uganda in order to help work in the uh, Sudan, the Southern Sudan Council of Churches. And he did whatever they asked him. And he did it with a smile. And he did it with this incredible positive attitude that you couldn't miss. I asked Joseph in the course of the conversation if he got to go back to his home village again. And he responded without any negative emotion. Yeah, I've been back. There's nothing there, and I don't think any one of my family is left. And he quickly followed that with, but I know I'll see them again. I know. In faith, I will see them again. Wow. Young man whose light is shining, who is the light, who lets it do everything that permeates his very being. And many of us complain if we don't get to do something small or we somehow feel victimized by the fact that we don't get enough cream in our coffee. I asked Joseph about his name, if that was a family name. And he said, no, I gave Joseph, I gave myself that name. I don't even know his real name, by the way. I never did get it. He wouldn't give it to me. I gave myself that name. You know why I gave myself that name? I said, I don't know. Why don't you tell me? He said, well, you know Joseph. You know Joseph from the Bible. Okay, I can get it down to two. Right? There's an Old Testament Joseph and there's a New Testament Joseph. Both of them are pretty important. Which one is it, Joseph? He said, you know Joseph. His brothers turned against him put him into slavery, threw him in a pit. Actually, they threw him in a pit first, and he was going to die. But you know what he did? He didn't die. He looked up into heaven, and he said, God, I know you're not done with me yet. And he wasn't. And then his brother sold him into slavery. And you know what he did? He didn't whine and moan. 
He looked up into heaven and he said, God, I know you're not done with me yet. And he wasn't. And God isn't done with me. How's your light shining, brothers and sisters, this morning? How's the light of your life, the light of your witness, the light of your faith, the light of the future as God's gift to you? How's all that shining for you, folks? John tells us an important truth. We who profess to be the body of Christ in this world, at this time, at this place, now are the carriers of the light. We should not simply be in the light. We need to work at being the light in all we do, in all we say in all we're about. I heard a story about a church in northern Indiana that threw open its doors and announced to the world that any and all were welcome to come regardless of labels. That is not a political statement, brothers and sisters. That's a simple thing. You open, every church has in front of it all are welcome. And now, I'm sorry, that's a lie. All who look like us, sound like us, smell like us, eat like us, understand like us, vote like us, tell me what's on the sign. I heard, heard of a church in northern Indiana that opened its doors and truly announced those words. All are welcome, regardless of skin types or lifestyles or political affiliations or labels. They made it their job to do the Jesus thing and encounter people where they were and invite them in and give them hugs without asking whether they were Republican or Democrat. It was a group of people that announced that they were sinners. Yeah. And they just wanted to be a place where other sinners could come to get fed, to get accepted, to get listened to, to get affirmed. They opened up the doors to the marginalized, to the outcast, to the ignored, to the forgotten. You know, those people that we deem as somehow deficient. We got them around us. Every one of our churches has those around us. They hugged the lonely, listened to the stories of the forgotten, cried with the broken souls, and accepted those deemed as unacceptable. They extended hope to the hopeless and joy to the fearful and love to the lost, not love that had conditions, but love that was absolutely, totally open to all. I heard about a church. That church grew in spirit. It grew in numbers. It grew in needs to be met. There were needs that were overwhelming. But folks, it was a place that was filled with joy and with hope and the love of God. I've heard of that church. I don't know which one it is. And I haven't found it yet. And that grieves me. Because what that says is, we've lost the light. That we enjoy living in the light but we really don't want to be the light. That's too much work. Or we don't want to be that different. Well, I hate to say you, I hate to tell you, but the light has come. The light of all humankind has come. The, the light that will not be put out by darkness has come. And we have the opportunity to be part of that light. So it really comes down to this. 
how much are you willing to embrace these words of John? For me, the answer becomes a little, a little simple. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. What? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen.